Alright folks, in this video I'm going to show you how to calculate uh, frequency. Okay. Now, uh, in this problem we're going to be dealing with a wavelength and we're going to be looking for frequency and in order for us to be able to solve this problem we need to know the following equation. This equation is C equals lambda times V. Okay. C is a constant. Okay, it's the speed of light. Now that constant that I want my students to use is C equals 3.00 times 10 to the eighth meters per second. That is the speed of light. Now if you look in a lot of chemistry books, a lot of physics books, you'll see that they use the numbers uh, 2.98 and if you really want to be a stickler to use 2.98 times 10 to the eighth meters per second go ahead and knock yourself out but <laughs> the constant that I want my students to use will be 3.00 times 10 to the eighth meters per second but if you really want to you want to knock yourself out go ahead and use 2.98 times 10 to the eighth meters per second but anyway this is a constant this is the speed of light so memorize it and memorize this formula. Now the problem is this lambda stands for wavelength. Okay, I'll write that over here. That's wavelength. Okay, this V that we see here, that V is frequency. Frequency is measured in units of one over a second, which a lot of times you'll see it written as S negative one or just simply written as Hertz. Now I tell my students not to use Hertz unless they specifically ask for the frequency. Carry out and use the unit of one over a second till you have to be fancy and use Hertz. Okay. Now wavelength, believe it or not, is actually measured in meters. Okay. So those are your units, meters and Hertz and as far as if you notice that the speed of light is in it's in meters per second because it's kind of like it's a velocity okay but that's the speed of light velocity speed directions the difference anyway that's physics so let's go back to chemistry now since they asked me to find the frequency what that means is I'm trying to find out what V is okay so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do some algebra so those of you that hate algebra just watch notice that this V is on the right side and notice that this C is already on the left side. What I'm going to do is make sure that these two st will still stay on separate sides. So basically I have V equals C. Now question is next what happens to lambda? Well since it's lambda times V I will divide both sides by lambda and when I do that I end up getting lambda underneath the C. Okay, I like telling my students just think of it as moving things around since this is uh, in a numerator and this is in a numerator because they're all over one then when you move it across an equal sign if it's in the top and it's multiplication just make it fall down to the bottom and when you actually physically move it it's gone forever that's why it's not written under, underneath this but those of you that are, stri are strict about understanding your algebraic rules divide both sides by lambda and this is what you get. This will make it easier on you as far as moving letters around than trying to move letters and numbers around if you just manipulate the equation first. Now after this all you need to do is plug and chug the numbers into this. Okay. Now you have frequency equals the speed of light which I've told you to use 3.00 times 10 to the 8th meters per second. Now th those of you who are physics people don't get mad at me for using 3.00. Just use it. Divided by, now my wavelength is 254 nanometers. Now there's a problem with that number. It is in nanometers. Now I need it to be in meters. Here is the easiest fix in the world. Okay. All you have to do is rewrite down what's already given to you, but where the N is, you're going to substitute it in with a power. So go ahead and write down 254 like you should. 
Now in place of n, you're going to write down what it would be in exponential form. It would be times 10 to the negative 9. And the times 10 to the negative 9 replaces the nano, so you just get m. Now when you do that, and you punch that into your calculator, be careful, okay? Turn your calculator on, it's 3.00 times 10, hit second comma, then type 8, divided by 254 times 10 to the negative 9. Now when you do that, you end up getting this big old long number, 1.118111, uh, uh, 0, 2, 3, 6, 2, E, 15. Well, I'm not going to write all that. I need three sig figs because I got three sig figs here, three sig figs here. So the answer that I'm going to write is 1.18 times 10. And you see, well, you can't see it here. It's a little blurred for you. Times 10 to the 15th. Okay, so I'm going to write to the 15th here. Now, if you notice on your units, your m's will disappear and you're left with 1 over a second. And that's the unit of hertz. So basically all you have to do is just do one more step to rewrite this to be a nice answer. That would be 1.18 times 10 to the 15th. And in place of the 1 over a second, you'll write hertz. So HZ. And folks, that is your answer. Now, uh, I do want to explain some things uh, really quickly to you uh, that will help this calculation be easier to you. All that you need to do is realize that nano uh, can be changed quickly into just regular units of meters just by replacing it with times 10 to the negative 9. So anytime that you see the following units, okay, if you see nano and you need it to be changed quickly into uh, meters or basic units, you need to use 10 to the negative 9. If it's micro, uh, which is basically like a U looking thing, uh, you'll re substitute it with 10 to the negative 6. And you can do this with any of the uh, uh, metric units. Uh, and one of the other ones that's not so common. Uh, that might be a hassle to you. Uh, if you hear mega, you would want, which would be a big capital M, you would use uh, 10 to the uh, sixth, that's a positive six, and giga. Sorry, I had to think about it. Which that's a G, believe it or not. You would use 10 to the ninth. And that will make these numbers easier. I know that this is not in scientific notation, but that's okay. It doesn't have to be because, you know, what difference would it make if I swung this decimal two more times and then changed this power? It doesn't really matter. Now, you wouldn't want it not in scientific notation in the end, but just to be used in your calculation for simplicity, it's okay. Okay? Anyway, I hope this helps. I hope my explanations were good enough. Just watch the video a few times and... I really hope it helps.